On paper, the Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon is the apex of the People's Liberation Army Air Force, a fifth-generation stealth predator built to end American air superiority. With over 300 units produced, it is the largest stealth fleet outside the United States. But in November 2025, the skies over Zhuhai told a different story. During a high-profile, low-altitude pass, the stealth war god didn't just roar, it choked. Thick black smoke billowed from its engines during a high-G maneuver, and the jet wobbled where an F-22 would have sliced through the air. Why does this matter? Because that plume was a signal. It exposed a fatal disconnect between the J-20's futuristic shell and its 1980s internal organs. Is the J-20 a true peer competitor, or is it a Frankenstein fighter, a patchwork of stolen designs and mismatched engines that will crumble in a sustained war? The algorithm hates it when we poke the dragon, so we rely on you to keep this channel alive. If you want to support independent analysis that digs deeper than the mainstream headlines, please hit that subscribe button. Now, let's pop the hood. Part 1. The Chu Hai Blunder a glitch in the matrix. The narrative was supposed to be perfect. November 2025, the Zhuhai Air Show. The J-20 was set to perform the Cobra Maneuver, a display of super maneuverability intended to prove it can dance with the US Raptor. But military experts watching the footage noticed two humiliating details. First, the visual signature. Modern stealth fighters do not leave trails. That plume of unburnt fuel is a radar beacon, essentially a giant arrow in the sky, saying, here I am. It indicates incomplete full combustion, a hallmark of older Russian derivative engines, not cutting edge stealth technology. Second, the movement. The J-20 forced the turn using its aerodynamic surfaces, its canards, rather than thrust vectoring control TVC, while the US F-22 uses its engines to point its nose with surgical precision. The J-20 was fighting the air. It relied solely on its massive forward canards to bleed energy and brute force the turn. This was an engineering confession. While Chinese state media continued to hype the twin dragon formation, international experts saw the shudder for what it was, proof that the J-20 is a knockoff. Fifth generation platform struggling to master the core technologies that the US perfected 20 years ago. This forces us to ask the question that keeps Pentagon generals confident and Beijing's engineers awake at night. Is the J-20 actually a blue water predator capable of challenging the US Navy? Or have they simply assembled a fleet of 300 prototypes masquerading as a standardized air force? To find the answer, we have to look past the paint job and into the heart of the machine, where the problems begin. Part 2. The Heart Transplant Crisis. One body, three hearts. To understand why the J-20 struggled at Chu Hai, you have to look at its propulsion. And the J-20 has a serious congenital heart condition. The core requirement for a fifth-generation air superiority fighter is Super Cruise. The ability to sustain supersonic speeds without engaging afterburners. The US F-22 Raptor has possessed this capability since 2005, powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-119. As defense analyst Brent Eastwood notes, this engine is a superior power plant that delivers unparalleled aircraft maneuverability and allows the Raptor to dominate the kinematic energy game. The J-20 cannot do this. The reality is that the J-20 fleet is not a unified force. It is a logistical Frankenstein fractured into three incompatible engine generations. Batch 1 relies on the Russian AL-31 1980s technology that is woefully underpowered for a heavy stealth airframe. Batch 2 runs on the domestic WS-10C, a stopgap engine. Batch 3 is supposed to run on the WS-15, the elusive target engine. This fragmentation exists because, as the South China Morning Post reported, China rushed its first advanced stealth fighter jet into service ahead of schedule, using stop-gap engines. The operational penalty for this rush is severe. Without the thrust-to-weight ratio provided by a true fifth-generation engine, 
the J-20 must engage afterburners to match American speeds. This is a fatal tactical error. As Mark Episcopos from the National Interest explains, the WS-10's insufficient thrust forces the use of afterburners, which compromises its stealth capabilities. Technically speaking, an afterburner turns a stealth fighter into a torch. It creates a massive infrared IR bloom, bypassing the aircraft's radar stealth and making it visible to electro-optical sensors like the F-35's EOTS from hundreds of kilometers away. The visual evidence from Chu Hai confirms this inefficiency, a sign of poor fuel-air mixing ratios and 20th century combustion technology struggling to push a 21st century airframe. So, where is the savior, the WS-15? While reports from June 2023 suggested a J-20 finally flew with twin WS-15, with observers noting a dull, deep rumble, distinct from the WS-10. Mass production remains a disaster. The bottleneck is metallurgy. Specifically, China's inability to consistently manufacture single crystal turbine blades capable of withstanding the extreme inlet temperatures of a low-bypass stealth engine. Zachary Keck, writing for the National Interest, highlighted a catastrophic failure during testing, where a WS-15 engine literally exploded. He cites a Chinese military source admitting that while technicians can produce cutting-edge quality single crystal turbine blades when concentrating on a specific single item, they have failed to turn the advanced technology into a standard product for mass production. While the F-22 fleet operates on a single, battle-proven standard, the J-20 fleet is a mix of prototypes and stopgaps, waiting for a heart that Chinese industry still cannot reliably build. Part 3. The Physics of Compromise. The Spear, not the Dagger. We must be clear. The J-20 is a dangerous machine, but it is dangerous in the way a sniper rifle is dangerous, lethal at a distance, but clumsy and vulnerable if you get close enough to grab the barrel. The J-20's design is a prisoner of its own engine failure. Because the Chinese engineers could not generate enough thrust from the engines, they had to generate lift from the airframe. Remember those canards that struggled to turn the jet? They aren't just bad for energy management, they are a disaster for stealth. Harry Kazianis, writing for the National Security Journal, puts it bluntly. Canards are unusual on a stealth aircraft because they complicate the stealth equation. But let's get specific. Recent independent RCS simulations reveal the true cost of this design. While the F-35 maintains a uniform, low observable signature across a wide frontal arc, the J-20 suffers from significant RCS spikes. In the X-band, the frequency used by fire control radars, the J-20's frontal RCS is estimated to hover around minus 4 dBSM. Compare that to the F-35, which sits comfortably around minus 12 dBSM. In radar terms, that is a massive difference. The F-35 is an order of magnitude stealthier based on shaping alone, and that's just the static profile. To a radar wave, a moving canard is not a wing, it is a mirror. When the J-20 maneuvers, those canards deflect, creating a momentary but massive radar return. The same applies to its all-moving vertical stabilizers, which are prone to Rayleigh scattering at lower frequency bands. This means the J-20 has a very narrow safe zone, roughly 15 degrees off center, where it is truly stealthy. Outside of that narrow cone, or the moment it tries to turn, it lights up. Brent Eastwood reinforces this, noting that the J-20's stealth is questionable, compromised not just by canards but by exposed engine nozzles that lack the serrated shrouding found on American jets. This leaves the J-20 highly visible to radar from the rear. This isn't just theoretical physics. It has been proven in the field. Mark Episcopos documented a humiliating incident in 2018 where the Indian Air Force claimed their Su-30 MKI fighters, fourth-generation jets, using Russian radars, successfully tracked J-20S flying over Tibet. Indian Air Chief Marshal Danoa publicly stated, Su-30 radar is good enough and can pick it up from many kilometers away. If a fourth-generation Russian radar can track the stealth war god over the Himalayas, 
What will the US Navy's and SPY-6 radars do to it in the Taiwan Strait? This vulnerability dictates the J-20's entire doctrine. It is designed as a spear, not a dagger. Jack Buckby explains that the J-20's omission of an internal cannon is not an oversight, but a doctrinal bet. Beijing views the J-20 as a first-look, first-shot killer, optimized to sprint out and launch long-range PL-15 missiles at US tankers and AWACS planes from beyond visual range BVR. But this philosophy relies on a perfect scenario where the enemy dies before they see you. Brent Eastwood calls the lack of a gun a bonus flaw, noting that it removes the last line of defense. If the J-20 is forced into a merge, it arrives unarmed. It lacks an internal cannon. It lacks the thrust-to-weight ratio to sustain energy in a two-circle fight. And as the Chu Hai airshow proved, it lacks the agility to win a knife fight in a phone booth. Part 4. The Software Void. Stolen Blueprints. Missing Data. If the engine is the heart of a fighter, the software is its brain. And this is where the J-20's Frankenstein nature becomes most apparent. It is an open secret in the defense community that the J-20's avionics bear a striking resemblance to American technology. As Kazianis writes in the National Security Journal, the J-20 didn't spring from nowhere. It is the result of a cookbook of ideas assembled from targeted theft of US programs like the F-22 and F-35. But as Kazianis sharply notes, recipes aren't meals. You can steal the blueprints for the hardware, but you cannot steal the source code that makes it work. This leads to the J-20's critical deficit in sensor fusion. In a true fifth-generation fighter, like the F-35, the pilot does not look at raw data. The jet is a flying computer. It takes inputs from radar, infrared sensors, and electronic warfare suites, and fuses them into a single, clean picture of the battlefield. The jet prioritizes threats automatically. The pilot is a tactician, not a sensor operator. The J-20, by contrast, relies on what experts call immature software. Reports indicate that PLA AF pilots suffer from information overload. Instead of a fuse display, they are forced to manually switch between radar screens and infrared feeds, mentally correlating the data in the heat of combat. Why does this gap exist? Because software needs to be taught, and the only teacher is war. The software running the F-22 and F-35 has been refined by over 20 years of continuous combat data from Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. Every mission updates the threat library. The F-35 learns after every flight. China has zero combat data. This is a catastrophic engineering deficit. Modern sensor fusion relies on mission data files, vast libraries of electronic signatures that tell the computer exactly what an enemy radar looks like when it is trying to kill you. The US F-35 software is built on 30 years of ground truth data collected over Iraq, the Balkans, and Syria. It knows the difference between a background radio signal and a Russian S-400 lock-on because it has survived both. The J-20, by contrast, is flying on assumptions. Its software is trained in a closed loop of simulations where Chinese AI fights other Chinese AI, pretending to be American. It is optimized to defeat a theoretical enemy that follows the rules of a math problem. But war is not a math problem. It is electromagnetic chaos. In the dirty environment of real combat, filled with unexpected jamming, debris, and false positives, theoretical code breaks. China has built a system that works perfectly in the math, but has never survived contact with the enemy. Part 5 the systemic rot, one generation, multiple hearts. The final and perhaps most fatal flaw of the J-20 program isn't aerodynamic or electronic. It is logistical. In military aviation, standardization is the holy grail. You want one engine, one avionics package, and one supply chain. This allows you to cannibalize parts from damaged aircraft to keep the rest of the fleet fighting. China has done the opposite. They have built a logistical tower of Babel. Because the J-20 was rushed into mass production before its core technologies were mature, the fleet of 300 aircraft is fractured into incompatible blocks. 
Batch 1 airframes rely on Russian AL-31. Batch 2 units run on the domestic WS-10C. Batch 3 units are slated for the WS-15. For a maintenance crew, this is a nightmare. It is what experts call configuration control chaos. In a high-intensity conflict, you cannot take a fuel pump or a turbine blade from a Batch 1 J-20 and install it in a Batch 3 J-20. They are effectively different aircraft inside the same shell. This creates supply chain fratricide, where different versions of the same fighter compete for limited maintenance resources. This problem is compounded by manufacturing quality. As Eastwood notes in National Security Journal, the J-20 suffers from visible quality control issues, including misaligned panels and rivets. In the world of stealth, where tolerances are measured in microns, a misaligned panel doesn't just hurt aerodynamics, it breaks the stealth envelope. Do the math. China claims a fleet of 300 J-20, but a fleet that cannot share parts is not a unified force. It is three small, fragile air forces glued together by propaganda. If a war drags on beyond the first week, the J-20 fleet won't just be fighting the US Navy. It will be fighting its own supply chain. This reality explains the calm demeanor of America's top brass. When U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General Charles Q. Brown was asked about the J-20, his response was telling. He noted that the U.S. doesn't lose sleep over the J-20, provided the U.S. continues its own modernization. The subtext is clear. The Pentagon views the J-20 not as a peer, but as a pacing threat, a benchmark that China is struggling to hit, while the U.S. is already moving on to sixth-generation platforms, like NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance. The Verdict, A Fleet of Paper Tigers So, what is the J-20 Mighty Dragon? It is a triumph of scale over substance. Beijing has successfully built the largest fleet of stealth fighters outside the United States. That is a fact. And we must not be naive. A fleet of 300 interceptors, armed with long-range PL-15 missiles, is a lethal threat to US tankers and supply lines. But a superpower isn't built on a first strike capability alone. It is built on endurance, reliability, and integration. The J-20 is a paper tiger in the engineering sense. It is formidable in appearance, but hollow in the core technologies that define fifth generation warfare. Its heart is weak, lacking the metallurgy for reliable supercruise. Its skin is compromised, reliant on canards that break stealth physics. Its brain is theoretical, running on software that has never seen a real war. Its legs are broken, hobbled by a fractured supply chain that cannot sustain a long fight. The black smoke that marred the Chuhai Air Show in November 2025 was not just an engine failure, it was the exhaust of a political system that demands victory headlines before the engineering is done. China has proven it can build things that look like fifth-generation fighters. But until they master the invisible science of sensor fusion and the brutal reality of combat logistics, the J-20 will remain a dragon that can roar, but cannot breathe fire without burning itself. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the technical reality behind the headlines, make sure to like and subscribe. The mainstream media reads the press release, we read the schematics. See you in the next one.